at the University of Calgary, the Kananaskis Field Station, and that was selected because it was a high altitude mountain sort of area. The cross conservation area, which is natural prairie, uh, the Fish Creek Provincial Park, highly treed um, water resources there, but the interesting part about it is it being an urban park in the Inglewood Bird Sanctuary. And just an, um, everyone, th this was using the protocols when we were there, and although there was different sites, people followed through practicing with the same protocols and program. You were supposed to name everybody. <laughs> That's it. So just a glimpse of some of the activities. The emphasis, you can see, was very hands-on. With the information that people got there and with the expertise of people that visited, um, time was given to uh, CloudSat as well as the four ESSPs, uh, the Flex, the Carbon, the Watershed, and the Seasons and Biomes. And these were done uh, in-house at the hotel so people could get together, select their own um, areas that they wanted to become more expert in and get together and work, compare what they had done in their countries, plus, of course, be trained and learn more information. Lots of group sessions that took place, and at the group sessions, uh, very fortunate to have um, speakers to come in to talk with people, uh, although there was many, some that I could highlight that were so popular, um, were from the sponsors and um, support groups that came. Dr. Gray and Stevens um, did work on connecting the clouds with art into the CloudSet program. And, of course, uh, Donna Charlevoix, that we all know, uh, gave an in-depth understanding of what's coming up for the Student Climate Change Program. Um, without saying anything more, if you look at the pictures, you know that one of the big things was the opportunity at the sharing sessions to share what people uh, have done with programs and to make new connections. This one we selected because um, two or three of our representatives in... Um, the British Columbia area are now corresponding with these people, and this came directly out of the poster session. The man here, um, some of that you might have met or could be in the future introduced to, the man in the blue there is uh, Mr. Sid Andrews. And if you just remember that name, I'm going to refer to him just a little bit later. He was a visitor to the sessions. And, of course the chance to get together in the cultural, Canadian cultural mosaic. This is perhaps one of our favorite pictures. In fact, unknown to Nan on this one, Bill and I actually had sent this one to the Calgary Herald, and it reached into a group of five for publication because um, when this picture happened, they said they were laughing and saying, one Indian to another. And we gave it that title and sent it into the Herald. And there was more than 600 pictures sent into the Herald for our weekend, and uh, we put that title on it. And it got into a top five, but they didn't publish it. You, you can tell which is Nan. She doesn't have much makeup on. <laughs> Um, the thing that we wanted to just, you know, talk a little bit about it is, for us in Canada, what hosting an event, the legacy, it, what it meant to us and, and, and the difference it, it made with, with all of you coming in, the support given to the conference there. Um, one thing that I'm going to talk about that we didn't actually put down because we'd become so used to it that we didn't think until we got here today that this was a really great thing, but before the conference came and we needed help across Canada, we really redesigned of how um, we were working globe. Like everyone else, so this isn't a complaint, there's always economic restraints with things, but nowadays with email and with Skype and everything, we really find that we can get together. And being such a large country and across, what we decided to do is to divide um, Canada sort of into areas so that we had uh, the West Coast British Columbia with one uh, representative there, Kate McEwen. For our northern community centered at a White House, we had Barb, Bob Sharp looking into items there. Bill, um, as along with Wendy Campbell for our prairie provinces, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. In Ontario and Quebec, um, Kevin O'Connor, uh, was going to take care of that area. And then in the Atlantic Maritime Provinces, um, 
we had Ian Waugh take care of that. And rather than Bill trying or myself trying, um, us getting together, we did a lot of publication, et cetera, saying to people if they went through these particular people uh, for any of the questions they had about GLOBE, that we could build a community in, and the schools in that area would get really, really great local attention because obviously someone like uh, Kevin O'Connor who does work out of Montreal and is bilingual with the French is more able to deal with those people than perhaps Bill and I are from a Western perspective. And those people were really, really instrumental in helping us get the conference together. And since that time, it's been a fabulous communication across the country for us. And as I say, um, it's become so natural to us for all of us to work together and with our groups there that we almost forgot that this was a legacy of the conference because it's become such a natural part of our working of GLOBE in Canada. And um, I'm sure like many other countries, including the United States, so much of what happens in GLOBE does come out of specific um, demands by curriculums within an area or specific demands by parents or students in the area or just from the economic or the cultural mix in the area. And by having people that actually live there and we come together by Skype or by email or do, it's made a really, really positive, big difference for us to, I think, attend to uh, the Canadian students and people that are working on GLOBE in a really personal way. But I had mentioned to you... Can I just interrupt? Oh. I, I want to thank uh, Teresa because without Teresa's expertise and support about and nudging, uh, we wouldn't be where we are. And, and yes, we're not like the U.S., uh, we end, but, but you've got a lot of experience down here and how it works. And so for us, we're kind of at the cusp of this thing and yeah, it, it, it's a challenge, but the fact is we've got people who are passionate and, and very, very dedicated to uh, GLOBE as a, as, as a science learning approach within the classroom. So thank you, Teresa. Mm -hmm. And we know it's really successful because we're like a big family now. Not to say that one doesn't get an, under another skin for their way of doing it, but you know, we look at that as a really, really good thing because when we have that sort of conversation, uh, you know, it, it does work well. Um, I'll just go quickly on then. Um, I, I pointed out to you Sid Andrews, who was came only as a guest to this conference and, um, and, and partner professional development. And he was a gentleman that at that time was in charge of the parks, et cetera, and helped us get the site set up. Now, since that time, he really enjoyed GLOBE, but since that time, he's become head of something called Ralph Klein Park. And Ralph Klein Park is not opening in Alberta until June, and it is a billion-dollar environmental education investment on behalf of Western provinces, and in particular, Alberta. And so it does happen. Who knows that you're, who you're going to run into? He did come and was so impressed with everything that happened that he and Bill are presently working because the facility you see at the bottom of the page is their environmental center that they're going to be servicing the community, but in particular, the schools that come in. And um, as you can see there, it's man-made wetlands, um, um, all sorts of things that you can read yourself. And what they have decided to do, and they're already starting to do, is make GLOBE the focus for learning at this center. And um, so I think that this is going to be an extremely big development that is happening um, in Alberta because of all of the programs and things that they went through that for GLOBE to be selected, that this would be the, the home um, for it. The second thing that we did get out of it is um, Dr. Kevin O'Connor, uh, the regional concat at McGill University and University of Ottawa, and many good universities in the world, but I think a lot of you would recognize the name as McGill because it's consistently one of the top 15 universities in the world. And they have, in the last year, because of Dr. Kevin O'Connor, um, had GLOBE experiences with 120 pre-service teachers in their department, and it was so successful. They're in the present right now moving it to University of Ottawa as well, so a great expansion for us, thanks to Kevin. The other thing um, that we can talk more about later if people are interested is uh, uh, United States Council General Laura Lockman also came as a guest, 
And she requested then Dr. Crystal Merriweather, who's the head of cultural affairs at the UMS Embassy in Ottawa, and gave them the direction that quite recently, just within this last month, that all of the embassy people across Canada got together on um, a digital conference. And the point of this conference, Dr. Kennedy was involved in it as well as Bill and Wendy Campbell, was to see, it, the direction was very much given to each one of these embassy people across Canada that they were to look into um, their workings to see what they could do to support GLOBE in Canada. Now this will take a little bit of work, but one of the things that we have asked for them to do is to see how we can get monies. I know I see your sign, and one more because it's been so good. Uh, four minutes, oh hey, we'll do it. And then Bob Sharp, uh, regional coordinator in the Yukon, is now on the committee. They're redesigning their programs in Northwest Territories, Nunavut and Yukon to make an Aboriginal um, specific program of studies. The programs of studies there have come out of the Alberta and Western Canadian Protocol, but now they're developing a purely Aboriginal um, program of studies. And Bob is on this committee and is already presenting to the committee um, GLOBE um, protocols and, and uh, ESSPs to be built into this curriculum. You can imagine how much better that is for us to have it directly built into a curriculum rather than us looking at a curriculum trying to find out where it's going to fit. And the other one is Do um, Ian Waugh who does our maritime provinces. Um, he and Bill have been working together because naturally, you know, we would like to get more funding. And we've come to the conclusion that we needed to change the way we were going about asking uh, corporations to give us funding. Up until this time, we pretty much focused on the idea of what GLOBE programs and what everybody was doing for students. But we came to the realization that in actual fact, our feeling is, is that the big corporations that do have the money to put into education are more after, not what it does in the schools and where the ratings are or anything like that, but exactly what it is that it does for them to get them good headlines. So now we're approaching our fundraising and it's, it's beginning to work, we think. The reason we're not saying we got money, but we're saying we got chances to meet with and explain the programs with the people who write the checks. And we feel that we've done this because now we're saying, well, GLOBE gives, um, uh, opens up a partnership, you know, for international environmental education. We look that it's in alignment with positive groundbreaking um, items, the visibility for their company, um, position sponsors to give a footprint in the educational community, and boy, do they ever want that for career pathways. And that... Um, um, giving positive images, et cetera, as you can see there. And do you know what? For us, for a fundraising point of view, I'm not saying they're writing the checks out, but that with the backing of the Canadian Embassy, of course, when the U.S. Embassy in Canada is involved in education, you think that the Canadian government doesn't want to have their foot in there too, you know, and so that's been a partnership, which, of course, brings about the corporations and at least gives us uh, a look into it and by flagging what it does for them in career pathways, what it does for them for a foothold in a community, what it does to allow their employees to be part of their children's education, we feel has been a good way of moving forward um, for GLOBE and perhaps the funding. Uh, the other person who's giving us quite a bit of support now is a Canadian space agency that um, so much of CloudSat, of the interior works, et cetera, were built in Canada. And because the satellite space agency is the fastest growing industry in Canada, they haven't directly given us money yet, but they have sponsored 60 teachers to come to listen to the atmosphere protocols, et cetera, and go back and share it with their schools. And they paid all the expenses for that uh, for Bill to go out to Montreal. So that's how it's worked from the conference for us. Just one, one, one last thing. I wanted to thank Marsha and uh, her cohort there for giving us the time on it. But they had a problem transcribing it into the metric system. <laughs> <laughs>